Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas, and with me here today, I have Team 7149, the Enforcers from New Jersey. They have just been absolutely killing it this season. They currently have four of the ten world records, two of the top three, and just have a blazingly fast robot. There's just so much to learn, and I want to dive right in, so let's learn more about the Enforcers coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you, and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Check out our all-new FTC content coming to Funds YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind-the-bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at YouTube.com slash FIRSTUPDATESNOW. All right, guys, let's get started with your intake. Definitely one of the most unique intakes we've seen this season. Not only is it unique, but it functions extremely, extremely well. I think for me, it draws parallels to 8393's uh, intake from Relic Recovery in the sense that it's very different from like the typical intake you've seen this season or in Relic Recovery, but it still works very well. And it also like kind of looks similar with the whole rotating uh, shaft with like the really large noodles or like spatula, whatever. Um, so please talk about it. Walk us through how it works. Yep. So the current version of the intake definitely takes some inspiration from those noodle style intakes from Relic Recovery. But we've had probably, this is probably the third version of the intake that we've gone through. Um, we had a rubber band wheel, we had horizontal uh, TPU noodles, and we finalized on these noodles. Yeah, so uh, building this intake really was a design gamble that we decided on really at the beginning of the season. Uh, we thought that even at a high level, cones would get knocked over. So we were like, how do we counteract that? And we decided to go with an intake. Yeah. And so now looking back on it, you know, you guys have had some very, very tough competitions. You've seen all the other robots. Is this something you would do again? You know, are there anything, are there any things you would do differently? Uh, or like, what is your advice to teams looking to implement similar mechanisms? Yeah, absolutely. So from a driver's perspective, the intake makes my life so much easier. Regardless of the cone orientation, I just have to run into it and we have it. Yeah. So Absolutely, we would do it again. Um, mm -hmm. As Noah was saying earlier, it was a design risk, a design gamble. Um, but we think it, it's paid off uh, big time. No, and yeah, I, I, mean, think, I think the community also thinks it has really paid off. And so your intake is really cool, but I think personally having seen it in person, where the magic is made has to be that transfer. So can you guys walk us through it, you know, maybe show us inside exactly how it works uh, and if there's any future plans you guys have for it. Of course. So... Uh, the cone comes through the front of the intake, obviously, and these noodles pull it in. Now, once it is inside the robot, uh, the cone sits in this cradle, uh, which Kyle is showing you there, and it can sit in actually two different orientations, mm -hmm. uh, nose side in or large side in. Mm -hmm. And either way it sits, it falls towards the center of the cradle, uh, which allows our claw to come down, and here, I'm sorry, allows our claw to come down, and grab the cone right out of it. <laughs> yeah. And so that grabbing mechanism, you know, talking a little bit about the software, is that automated or do the drivers have to choose like which orientation the cone is grabbed from? Uh, so the orientation isn't automated. The whole procedure is automated in the sense mm -hmm. that once it's in there, they press one button, goes down and grabs it and does everything they need. Uh, but then when you're ready to rotate it, mm -hmm. you do that once you're out of the robot. So if I just lift the lift up, we can just spin this with a wrist. Oh, in either way. so I see. So it always grabs like it using the same uh, automation, but it's just after yeah. you grab it, whether you rotate it or not. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes perfect sense. And so now talking a little bit about like the sensors you have in your intake as a whole, what, uh, okay. what sensors do you use? What uh, algorithms or automations do you have that just really make you guys as fluid as you are? Uh, so one of the main sensor usages we have in our intake system is something fairly simple. Uh, on the front of our intake, we have a magnetic limit switch, uh, which kind of acts like an encoder that only reads in two positions. Uh, one when the noodles are vertical this way, and one when they're flipped 180 degrees. Uh, oh, wow. And this allows the noodles straight up and down. Uh, we found that we had issues uh, with picking up the cones or pulling them out of the robot when the noodles were sticking inward like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and also it makes the profile of the robot a lot smaller by having them stick vertically. 
Yeah, uh, the only other cool programming automation we do for the whole intake transfer is servo motion profiling to make the whole movement smoother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, before we go on to the rest of your robot, what are like the, some of the biggest iterations you guys have had on your intake and how did you go about deciding that they needed to happen? Uh, so we actually used uh, competitive prototyping this year to come up with our intake design. We knew we wanted an intake, but there were a couple different methods we tried out. Uh, so two of our catters actually, uh, one of which being Davis, designed two different intakes. Uh, David actually worked on a horizontal version of the intake uh, with horizontal spinners. Mm -hmm. uh, and Chris worked on a very different looking version of this intake right here. But we did a lot of testing and we determined that the vertical noodles were uh -huh. uh, the best for us. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. And so uh, jumping a little bit into the autonomous program and leading into the intake arm that you use for autonomous, have you had that arm since the beginning of the season, or is that something you added later, and, you know, if so, why? Uh, so we haven't had the auto arm all season, though we kind of knew we'd need something like it uh, from the beginning. Uh, the intake itself can't pick up cones that are stacked up like this. It would knock them over, and it wouldn't be consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, so once we had sort of had an intake that was somewhat finalized and started working into trying to get more cones in autonomous, mm -hmm. we added an arm that would allow us to go down and grab cones from the stack. Uh, so this arm is a simple inside grab, and uses these hooks to grab onto the cone and lift them out. Um, and we went with the inside grab to make it easier to transfer to our claw, because with an inside grab, it does not interfere with the way our claw grabs, and we have full coverage of the cone. Yeah, claw. and can we see a little, uh, can we see the grabbing mechanism specifically, uh, perhaps more close up? Because, yeah. you know, there's just so many different claw types this year and it honestly seems like a lot of the teams that have done this inside grabbing mechanism have a similar way of doing it so it's pretty cool um that you guys have developed a mechanism that's so effective and so i guess my next question with regards to this is what do you guys use this for any other parts of the game in the sense that i know in relic recovery teams that have those relic arms like some of the top teams they would use that relic arm for example to knock down coat or to knock down glyphs from the uh, from the crypto box right so like does this have any secondary feature or is your intake able to handle everything else you need yeah that's a great question we actually uh it's something we're working on now if not let's just show it off um so due to the length of the auto arm, it can only score in the low poles, mm -hmm. um, as well as the ground junctions. But um, we also can transfer it. So uh -huh. let's say our intake goes out for some reason, or we have an issue with it, uh, we can just use the auto arm to cycle like normal. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. And so now talking a little bit uh, about the materials you guys are using for your robot, it. It's kind of hard to tell on camera. I mean, everything just looks black. So what uh, what materials are you guys using? How did you decide which materials to use and how has it worked out for you? Right, so the main material we use on this robot is POA. Um, everything black and some of the blue you can see is pretty much POA. We do use TPU on one piece of our robot, which is this front cone guide right here. Um, mm -hmm. It allows us to get uh, some flexibility. So when we're picking up a cone and then when we transfer to our claw, our claw does not grab the cone guide and get stuck. Um, we use PLA just because it's really easy to print, and it also has enough durability to do everything we want it to do. It's also pretty affordable. Yeah, we've been using PLA for about five years now, so we, we know how it works very well. Uh, and I mean, it supports this entire lift. So yeah. oh, I'd say I'd say it works pretty well. The whole double reverse four bar is PLA. So, yeah, yeah. Wow. including the gear. Yeah, yeah that's... including the gear. Yeah, that, that's really that's really impressive. I didn't know this until I saw you guys at New Jersey State. So very, very interesting material choice. I mean, obviously, it's worked out very well. No, no complaints there. Um, and so you guys mentioned the double reverse four bar. So, you know, let's just jump right in. Give us an overview of how it works, how you're powering it, and any changes you guys have made throughout the season. Yeah. So initially in the season... Sorry. Initially in the season, uh, we had a metal double reverse four bar using some thin GoBuilda uh, beams. Mm -hmm. And the metal beams actually caused more of an issue than most of our other parts in terms of they would bend or warp. And once they bent, they kind of stayed yeah. off position. And the whole lift would be off center. It wouldn't go up and down properly. Um, so after we traveled through that, uh, we decided to just try 3D printing it and see how hard it would be. Mm -hmm. And we did break some bars, but we found little easy ways to make them stronger, reinforce them. Um, 
to lead us to the current state of the four bar of the double reverse four bar. That yeah, says we I actually, we yeah, I actually want to ask more uh, about that. You said you found ways to reinforce them. So was that just through uh, different slicer settings, or was that like through putting some composite materials inside? How did you do that? So yeah, so it's not by material. They're all just PLA, mm -hmm. uh, but slicer settings definitely play a big role. Uh, we try to slice as, as efficiently as possible, and also just adding material in certain areas where we can bulk up and uh, taking away material in certain areas that just doesn't need it. One troubling part of this lift is the bottom set of bars, which are longer, which are so long that we can't print them in one piece on any of our printers. Mm. And so they're actually split into three different sections. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to make sure these three sections stay together properly, they have an extremely tight fit. Uh, and each of the contours where they meet are uh, tight fit and have basically no tolerance in them. Yeah, yeah, got it. And so I see these springs you guys have here. Uh, so, you know, can you talk about them, how you guys tested which spring length you would need and how they've worked out for you? Right. So one of the main reasons we have the double reverse four bar was it was going to be really easy to counter spring for gravity. Mm -hmm. um, the springing uh, we chose uh, by ordering a couple of different types of springs. We calculated the length we need uh, through CAD and finding distance between uh, two screw holes, which we've implemented. Sure. And then we ordered a whole bunch, and then we tested, and then we found out that these were the springs that we wanted to use. And since implementing these springs, the lift has gotten a lot more stable, and we haven't broken a bar since we've installed them. Since it yeah. So much no, that, that's fantastic. And so I want to talk a little bit about the actuators and sensors you guys are using. So how are you actuating your DR4B? Like what's the specific transmission method and what motors are you using, uh, if it's motors? And then what sensors are you guys using to really automate that lifting mechanism so quickly? Yeah, so driving our lift are two go build up 117 RPM or 15.9 to 1 ratio motors. Mm -hmm. uh, and they each have a... Uh, one to two gear ratio uh, to the bars mm -hmm. uh, using a two to one power set. Uh, so effectively 60 RPM on the output. Um, and in order to determine the accurate positioning of this lift, we have one potentiometer on each side of the lift to measure their angles. And programming wise, we take these angles and we find the average of them and we use a combination of motion profiling and PID control to send the lift to various heights. Yeah, and uh, you know, just getting, taking a little deeper dive into the programming and the angles you said, how much variation do you guys actually have between the two potentiometers? Um, is that like, you know, if you guys have that number off the top of your head? So I uh, don't have the number off the top of my head only because we've tuned it out of the robot essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, we took various measurements of the voltages of the potentiometers at different angles mm -hmm. and determined how to properly offset them so they somewhat match angles at every level. Um, so the average is fairly consistent. Yeah, no, got it, got it. And so looking forward to the world championship, uh, I'm sure you guys want to do as well as you did in New Jersey, you know, winning Alliance captain, setting four or five top 10 scores in the world, just absolutely blowing away the competition uh, with your Alliance. So what's the plan for Worlds? You know, any, any sneak peeks you guys want to provide us and what can we look forward to seeing from the enforcers? You know, obviously have fun, win. Uh, we have been working uh, a lot on our driver strategy, uh, our driver drills, uh, really making sure we nail each period of the game. Uh, we've been, you know, scouting a little bit, so uh, we've got our eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, Enforcers, thank you so, so much. There's just so much to talk about this robot. I think we've done a pretty good job of, you know, giving a deep dive into the really little things that make this robot so impressive, so fast, just fluid all around the field. I'm really glad we could do this. Thank you so much. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 7149, The Enforcers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at YouTube.com slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
keep the conversation going, and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now, and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. <laughs>